Good evening, all. This is our second talk on leadership, and today talks is a, is a continuation of yesterday to talk about leadership and global leadership and what are the challenges that global leadership is facing and how we think we can solve it. And the challenge about leadership is fundamentally important as it affects the, the problems that we are facing as, and affects how we can mobilize people to try to solve the, uh, these problems. Today I changed the background. Uh, it's, it's one of the attempts that we try to uh, give our videos a better uh, way of, uh, of looking and uh, give you a little bit of feeling. So today talking is about uh, leadership and the la in the, our last talk we talked about what are the aspects of leadership that is affecting our life today? One of these aspects is trust and integrity. And with trust and integrity, many people across the globe uh, are facing the problem, especially that the 1% of the world are controlling 82% of the wealth that is generated in the year 2017. So there are some challenges in trust and integrity. There are other aspects that uh, we talked about, we talked about the aspect of leading people who are under significant suffering or under significant pain. We talked about the challenge of becoming a role model and how it's becoming more difficult for you to become a role model for people. And we talked about European model and leadership and how people can feel that the people who are leading them are facing the same uh, situations they face on a daily basis. And we talked about uh, the challenge of a uh, competition and the marketing competition and how leaders across the globe are facing continuous challenges from bigger organization or from well-established organization that already have a significant presence in the, and impact in the world and many uh, uh, leaders cannot uh, uh, and many leaders cannot reach the stage where they have the ability to uh, uh, overcome the impact of others and influence others in a new direction or if influence people or people under their command in a new direction that they need. And today I will talk about very important uh, two uh, aspects. The first, one, uh, the first one is about politics and interest and the second one is about uh, uh, motivation and the right way of sp uh, the right level of speech. So many leaders across the globe in these days are being cornered with their uh, minority interests or with a small group interest. And there are many examples across the globe of people who are doing this. And it's uh, uh, something that people would always uh, look forward to, uh, to, uh, to, to reflect that they believe in big ideas and they believe in big concepts and they believe in a, in a global world and they believe in, uh, the, in a world that is based on innovation, in a world that is based on, uh, in, a, in a world that is based on, uh, on mutual interest and multi-stakeholder world of people trying to engage uh, collaborative action to uh, uh, solve the, the biggest problems of the world, like energy, like climate change, like terrorism, like cyber attacks, like many, uh, like a global governance and so on, like peacekeeping and so many uh, other issues. What we are seeing across the globe that many politicians across, uh, that many politicians, when, they, when it comes to the elections times, they, fa they uh, fail in the trap of their minority group interest or for, for their small group interest. And we have seen this clearly in Europe, where Europe is a, is a, is a good example of a, 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 a big idea, a noble idea that we can bring uh, nations, countries of, that speak different languages under one umbrella and they can become, uh, they can help each other from an economical point of view, they can create a significant market together and they can solve all of their problems together regardless of their income levels, regardless of their current situation and this has actually helped Europe to have a, a continuous peace after a for uh, significant years and it has uh, created an integrated society where people can travel um, between these countries without, uh, without stopping at borders. So it was a very noble idea. However, 
after some time, some countries has felt that their interest or some part of their interest or part of their control under some level of threat, and they, they felt that it's time for them to act against this direction. So they acted based on their country's interest rather than on pushing the big, uh, great ideas that people are promoting, that young people are believing for. And with this, uh, with this, uh, with this pattern happens across the globe. We see it in so many uh, nations, and and the thing is, it ha it has actually resulted in the in the United Kingdom leaving uh, the European Union. So they say we don't want to be part of the European Union. We don't want to be controlled by another uh, government and we are not interested in having an over, open borders policy, and we are not interested in helping, uh, let me say, countries that are very far away from us, like Greece or Latvia or Lithuania. We are not concerned about these issues. We would love to build our own bilateral relationships based on our own interest. And this kind of uh, thought is now dominating many uh, areas in the world, which is actually against the idea of a global leadership, against the idea of trying to mobilize people into solving bigger problems that the world is facing. Because many of the problems that we are facing, whether it was peace, whether it was terrorism, whether it was climate change, it needs many countries to collaborate with each other. And one of the examples that actually the United States withdrawing from the climate change or Paris Treaty was a, 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 let me, a drawback for the efforts of different leaders to push and solve and try to solve the problem of climate change. That is being said, we have to, uh, uh, now we would like to talk about other uh, concepts and other aspects. It's about the right level of speech. Unfortunately, because many politicians, in order to win the elections or in order to reach uh, a significant position within their countries, they try to use a high, uh, a high language, and a language that uh, that uh, uh, that promote that we are going to do significant work, that we are going to do significant changes. We will help the poor will change the current situation dra uh, drama uh, dramatically. And when it comes to reality, they fail to deliver. So many people, unfortunately, stop believing in speeches and in the, in the conversation. They have a problem with the level of speech. They have a, a problem with the level of vocabulary that is being used. They have a problem with... Uh, uh, who they should believe or who they should not believe. Combine the six aspects of challenges that I talked about leadership. This reflects some of the challenges that global leaders are facing on a day-to-day -day basis, and they have to, uh, uh, to try to balance between uh, their local communities and between their global goals and between their local community goals uh, in order to find a, a multi-stakeholder solution that looks appealing to all. Visionary, needed, uh, vision, uh, visionary leaders are highly needed these days to try to mobilize people and tackle the world's most difficult problem. I will stop today because uh, we, t we try to stick to our speeches with around nine minutes and I think uh, nine to 10 minutes, and I think I have finished my time. I hope that you enjoyed this talk, and we will be talking more about it in the future, but I think we have covered the topic of leadership in, in a sufficient way. So I would, uh, I would like to thank you to all for coming. I would like to thank Amr Nasser, Hamoud Shadid, Mohammed Adawi, Samar Shadid, Iyad Shadid, and Khalil Al Maani for all of their contribution. Uh, and for uh, joining our session. I thank you all and I wish you a great evening.